that time again, finally. It's time for Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. My name is Deborah, and I'm coming to you from here on my family farm in the foothills of the Arkansas Ozarks, where I like to do all the crafts. I knit, I crochet, I sew, I quilt, I make baskets, I make jewelry, I do needlework, I make clothes, if you saw my last video. <laughs> uh, I like to make jewelry, I make soap, I can, which counts as a craft, I would say. Uh, I'll try any craft once and twice if I like it. Oh, don't be jealous. My goodness. And we have a menagerie accompanying me today. I am also a university professor at a local four-year university where I teach courses to physics majors, to general education majors. Uh, and I am a docent at our planetarium uh, when we have uh, planetarium shows uh, for the public, which hasn't happened yet because we're still on red status on campus. Um, and last but not least, I am a farmer. I am a third generation family farmer, a third plus generation family farmer. It is chaos and mayhem here today. <laughs> um, where I raise grass fed beef cattle, I raise horses, I have heritage poultry, I have show quality rabbits, and I have a retirement herd of miniature horses, miniature donkeys, donkeys, a miniature mule named Pumpkin who thinks she rules the roost, and Princess Penny, the pot belly pig, the protector of the poultry. And I guess Reese's deserves his own shout out as well. Reese's Pieces, my boyfriend of the chocolate turkey out there in the uh, yard walking around. And as you can tell from my mini <laughs> this morning, because they're all excited, I guess, I am fur kid mom to 13 dogs, seven indoor cats, and an undetermined number of outside barn cats. And you'll notice I said 13. Sadly, Lacey, one of my oldest dogs, uh, passed away in November. Uh, she was 14, and she was a big dog, so she had a long, long life. She was one of my, the sort of the last of my parents' dogs. We still have feathers kicking around, though. She's older than the hills of Georgia, as my family would say, and I think she's going to outlive us all. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so if any of all of that sounds interesting to you, I hope you'll come along and join me as we do episode, I think this is, is this 79? 79? Of Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, Willie. Okay. And we got fizzy. It's chaos and mayhem. Okay, if you're looking for us on social media, you can find the uh, group. Obviously, you found my channel, Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. I have changed my channel name uh, just to make it easier for people to find. Um, also, there is a Facebook group for the podcast, uh, Diary of a Physicist Farm Gal. I do have a Ravelry group for those of you who are on there. That's attractive. I'm also on Ravelry and Instagram as Doc Firewoman. You can contact me through probably Instagram is the easiest. Uh, and I do have a Twitter account, but I barely use it. But if you follow me on Twitter, I am a socially liberal Democrat and post as such. So if that kind of stuff bothers you, perhaps that is not the place for you. Oh, I, I wanted to start adding my pronouns are she, her. And I live on occupied land, or I occupy land that is home to the Osage and Caddo people, and also possibly Quapaw, although uh, the different maps that I've looked at have some discrepancies for this part of the Ozarks. Um, so if you want to know more about how to find out whose land you're living on, there is a great link, and I'll try to remember to put it below so that you can look that up. Uh, I think it is, we need to be aware. The more you know, the be no more do better, right? Good trouble. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, let's talk about make-alongs. I have a few going on that I have kind of just let slide, but they're still technically going on. There is the farm gal mal, which is just make a craft, do a craft, doesn't matter, no limits, whatever you consider to be crafty in your world. You can tag that on Instagram or you can post it in the Facebook group. I do have a Ravelry thread for it too. 
Um, so I'll probably draw from the hashtags on Instagram, draw from the group on Facebook, and then draw on Ravelry as well. I don't know exactly what I'll give away just yet, whatever comes to mind <laughs> uh, that I have. Um, also, there is the No Shame Mail, where it's anything you started this year, even if you've got a million other things going on. And we're still working on the large, long dog sampler pandemic uh, cross stitch. Um, we might have another stitching weekend for that in December. I am going to do holovlog, which is what I'm choosing to call what other people call vlogmas, because I think holovlog is more inclusive, considering that not everybody celebrates Christmas. Uh, and there's tons of holidays that can be celebrated. So holovlog, right? Um, not warring on Christmas, just saying there's more out there than what you might do, and I like to acknowledge that. So, anyway, so yay, we're going to do all those things. I hope you'll come along with me on Holovlog. If you haven't checked it out, I did do a sewing review video yesterday. If you're interested in the garments that I've been making since I decided to start sewing for myself again, uh, if I can figure out how to be fancy and do it, I might try to link it up here. Wouldn't that be fancy? <laughs> if I can't, I'll link it down here. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, that's me. So let's get started. I don't have any finished objects. So we're going to have sort of a little informal whip parade. Do, do, do. Um, you know, parades with marching bands and horses. We don't have any marching bands. We got some horses. We can maybe go get those in at the end. Anyway, um, we're going to do a little informal whip parade of my cross stitch and my fibery whips. Uh, and there's no, not going to be any acquisitions this time because I have decided to curtail my spending simply because I get very anxious when I owe money and I'm trying to get Baxter's big vet bill paid off and my, um, had to buy a new HVAC unit, get that paid off. Plus I bought a new car. Uh, so trying to get all that done. Uh, I get real nervous when I owe money, so I like to get things paid off, so I have curtailed my spending. And my breakfast is ready, so this is a good time to stop for this part of the video and move on to works in progress. Okay, we're going to start with my fiber whips, because um, I have, think I have fewer of those. Um, we'll start with my amigurumi selection here. I'm still working on poor Bernie here. I need to make his glasses and get his mask put on. Then I can give him away to the person that he's intended for. I did finally find the wire to make his glasses. So hopefully Bernie will be an FO today. But got Bernie almost done. Um, I made two little bunny rabbits. It is a test for the Children's Advocacy Alliance Christmas Party. And they weren't large enough for the requirements for the toys. So they still need tails. So I've got, these are both the classic stuffed bunny pattern from One Dog Wolf. Forgot who did the Bernie pattern and I'd failed to look it up. So I apologize. I'll try to remember to link it below. So I still need to make pom-pom tails for these two little guys. Can we see them all right? Yeah, there we go. So these are just out of some scrap, uh, bulky weight yarn that I had. Um, yeah, so. Then I am working on Muffin the Puffin by Irene Strange. I uh, bought this pattern a couple of years ago. I think next year, even though I've been terrible about keeping up with my make-alongs this year, I might do another Amigurumi make-along because I enjoy making them and I need the motivation. Um, I like making them. I like having little make, making some little friends here. But this is Muffin the Puffin. Which way is the light best? I, I'm in a terrible place for the light, aren't I? This is Muffin the Puffin by Irene Strange. And I'm just making her out of some scrap uh, Red Heart yarn. I've got the body done. I'm working on the head. I'm almost finished with the head. Uh, then I'm going to wash these because the dogs and cats have gotten them a little bit hairy and dirty. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so making some progress there. Then. Kirsty from the Grenade Creations podcast sweetly sent me this little Aldi, I think it's from Aldi, um, crafting kit. It's a little blue whale. And you know I love some whales. So I did start this uh, with the intention of making it with the needles that were in the kit. It just comes with some wooden needles. It's like a, this is not really a beginner knit though. So I don't think they should anywhere. So it just says knit a friend. So I need more friends, right? So I'm making, this is the upper, I'm making the bot, top part of the body right now. So I need to just 
pull this out and finish it. I get, I started on this when I was sitting at my kitchen table when I was teaching online and I would sit and knit in between class and I just kind of let the poor little thing slide. So I need to, I need to finish it. I need to finish it. So maybe by the next time I podcast, you will see Muffin the Puff. Maybe everybody will, all my friends will be done. <laughs> That's my goal. Finish my friend. Okay, so now on to non-friend um, <laughs> making in this beautiful bag that Maria uh, from Colorado sent me last year for Christmas, which is a nice huge bag. I am working on the Hedge Witch shawl. Oh, here's a friend in here too. I did not make this one. Miss Shirley sent me this one. This is one of the dragons she made for the Children's Advocacy Alliance. And I forgot to mention the, the uh, lady did pick them up. She was very delighted. Um, I made some toys, Shirley made dragons, and Penny made some snakes and some octopus. So um, I'm just gonna send both Shirley and Penny a gift since they were the two people who contributed to the toys. So this was this is a friend also, but I did not make that one. Um, but anyway, so in here is my Hedge Witch shawl. The Hedge Witch is a pattern by, let me look, by Wolf and Fawn Knits. Came out in 2017, I think. Yeah, 2017. Um, and I have had it bought for quite a while, so I decided it no time like the present to start making it. I haven't worked on it in a while. Uh, this was my knitting when I was online when I visited with Antonia one day, and I haven't really worked on it since then. But it's a very easy knit. My little progress keeper there is from Charmed and Dangerous. I'm just knitting this out of some leftover. Well, this is actually Wool of the Andes that Vanessa gave me from Crafty Planty Life. It used to be a historian knits, but Crafty Planty Life. Uh, and then I'm using this, and then when I change colors, I will use the leftover yarn from my flax sweater that I knit. So um, that's how far I am on the Hedge Witch. The end. In this bag that uh, June made me, she was my project bag swap partner a couple of years ago, and she gifted me this beautiful bag. I am making If Wishes Were Horses. If Wishes Were Horses by Stephanie Klein. It's a crochet, filet crocheted poncho that has horses on it. So um, I have just started the filet chart. So I um, this is how far I am on that. So I've just started the fillet chart um, of the horse. I think I'm about two rounds in on that. So that's how far I am on that. And again, my progress keeper is a little um, boonicorn, she called it, from Charmed and Dangerous. It's a little ghost unicorn. The yarn that I'm using for this is yarn that was dyed for me by Agatha from A Magpie Knits. It's fingering white yarn. So there's that. So I've got that done. And then the one that I've been putting the most time in on is in this bag from uh, Nikki from Knick Knack Knits. She made this for me. Um, it is Look at My Holes by James Watts. My friend Whitney had made this and I saw it and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be awesome to wear over like a dress or something or a, a, a t-shirt or something for winter time when you just need a little extra something over it. So I am getting very close on this. It is a cropped length sweater. I am, um, I've split for the sleeves. So my sleeves are on hold here. And I'm on what the pattern calls for is the last repeat for the body. But I think I'm gonna do one more repeat. So, and then the sleeves are basically, when you pick up for them, you basically just do one repeat and then you do the, the ribbing. I think I might make them a little longer. I'm going to see um, where I'm at after I finish the body. I'm going to finish the body first because I know I've got plenty of yarn. Um, my little progress keeper here is also from Charmed and Dangerous. It's a little uh, wintry wolf wearing a scarf there. Yeah, he's very sweet. This yarn is some beautiful BFL yarn dyed by Maria from Ninja Chickens Podcast. I have so many great five friends, y'all. I was just pondering on that this morning. I have met so many great crafting friends, you know, cross-stitchers and knitters and everything through this podcast, and I'm so grateful for that. So, yeah, so those are my fibery whips. Woohoo! I don't have that many going right now. I have several kitted up, 
But I don't have that many going because I want to try to get... I don't want to start anything else. I'm going to try to finish this for sure. I think this can be a finish fairly quickly. And then the poncho. I definitely got to finish these amigurumi. So I kind of want to get these all off the table. And then we'll talk about what I want to make in future crafting. But we're going to do some needlework whips now. Okay, so we're going to... I tried to pull out everything that I had. I'm going to show you my oldest work in progress. I started this... I think late 2018. I probably haven't worked on it in at least a year, maybe a year and a half. This is a piece of needlework. It's butterflies. And um, yeah, I started it. Um, what I'm finding with needlework, with the needle that it sent me, is I have a hard time pulling the yarn through when I get more than one yarn in there. Um, but I'm getting better. I bought me some needle grips, so that helps. Um, this is in a scroll frame stand. My scroll frame's in the kitchen. I just haven't worked on this in a while. Um, and I think I've even lost, no, there's my needle. Um, not that, you know, I just haven't, haven't worked on it in a while. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. I need to pull it out and work on it some more. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I can say about that. All right, um, then the next one is um, Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers. I have not touched this, and apparently I've lost my needle too, which is not surprising. Um, haven't touched this since the last time we did a Pandemic weekend here. So um, this is, I've finished page one and I'm on page two. Um, I'm using the Colorous Floss by DMC for the designs, and then I'm using complementary solids for the flowers and the birds and the animals and things like that. So, the light in here is not so great. I'm sorry. But that's where I'm at. I haven't touched it in a while. I think, honestly, I got discouraged because I'm on the Pandemic Sampler Facebook group. And I saw all these really beautiful um, ones with all these colors. And I thought, well, mine's not going to be that pretty. But mine is going to be pretty. I just need to trust the process and get further into it. Because I, I like my color choices. This is on a 28 count over 2 wood violet from 123 Stitch. I've just got the rest of it wadded up in the back there in, the, in my grime guard, as you can see. So I need to get this out and put some time in on it. Because I do like it. I just need to finish it. And I've made some modifications to it already. Um, I added, the group has got like a little mods you can make. I added the lock and key and the, the kangaroo and the koala bear for the Australian bushfires and the lock and key for lockdown. Uh, I've got the other ones charted out that I want to make. I just need to, to work on this. I just need to work on this. So, yeah. Come on, guys. Shh enough chew it on themselves making a racket okay um the next one is my uh, animal almanac from frosted pumpkin stitchery i haven't worked on this in a while this bag is from uh april nine designs one of their cross stitch bags um i am well it's in the scroll frame so it's hard to tell or the Hue Snap. I am on, I'm getting ready to start August. I got, I worked on it through um, July and then I put it down and I haven't touched it since then. So, well, and this was July 2019. Is that right? No, 2020. 2020. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I think it was 2020. So, um, this is a sweet, I love, it's definitely Frosted Pumpkin style, and that's how they sucker you in with those cute little animals, right? But I just haven't worked on it. I lost my steam on it, and I haven't picked it up, and there's nothing wrong with it. I just haven't worked on it, and that's on me, not them. So, anyway, um, yeah, maybe I'll pick that up soon. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I get in these moods where I'll pick up something that I'm, over halfway done in on and then I'll get in this mood to finish it and so that's what happened with the animal with the Chinese zodiac from frosted pumpkin I'm like okay I'm gonna finish this now <laughs> I just haven't done that yet in this bag by April 9 designs I've got a little small mill hill kit that I bought a bajillion years ago um, it's a little um, beaded Halloween scene here 
and this is where I'm at on it. So not very far, but you know, progress is progress. Again, it's one of those things that one of these days I'll just go today, I'm gonna work on that and I'm gonna work on it till I finish it. I just haven't been struck by that particular mood yet. <laughs> okay, um, then the next one is The Farm Quaker by Jardin Privé. I started this when Vanessa had her secret garden sale um, back in last year and then um, have worked on it on the Bendy Stitchy Quaker Zooms a couple of times and that's really the only time I pull it out. Um, I do like it and I've made some progress on it. So, um, you know, I do like it. This is in Scarlet Buckeye Gentle Arts, and this is um, some 28 count lamb's wool from 123 Stitch. I don't remember where I got my needle minders, I'm sorry. I'm not a very good floss tuber, I guess. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I don't think I have a photograph photograph of that that's not the chart, so I can't really show you, but it's just different farm motifs, like there's a bee hive here and a goose. And um, there's all kinds of farm animals and stuff on it. So I just need to work on it. I just, you know, I don't know why I haven't. I just, like I said, I get in these moods. I've been in a sewing mood, obviously, if you watch my sewing video. So that's where most of my energy has been going. And this is in a me-made bag of periodic table fabric. It was a gift from Mary. Um, then in this also, this is a Charlotte bag also from April 9 Designs. I am working on the We Believe Sal. I have finished two of the parts. Uh, I think there's 10, 10 sections to it. I finished the centerpiece, which says We Believe, and then Kindness is Everything. And I'm working on Science is Real right now. So that's how far I am on that. I'm doing the smalls on that because I want to, um, I want to make a mobile out of it. I think that'd be an interesting finish, so I want to make a mobile, but that's how far I am on that. Then, I think there's two in here. Um, the first one is the Runes Tree of Life. Um, I don't remember who this is by. I bought this off of Ed, the pattern off of Etsy. I need to look it up. It is a I'll just flash the chart really fast. It's the tree of life with all the runes surrounding this. I started this when I was taking a runes study uh, group, runes study class. And um, I thought I would cross stitch each rune as we were talking about it. And this is how far I've gotten. So obviously I didn't keep up with that either. So this is on some uh, Fortnite Fabrics linen. And um, this is Gentle Arts Floss, I believe. Um, I think it's called Misty Mountain. So this is some 32 count linen over two uh, from Fortnite Fabrics. So that's how far I am on that one. Then also in this bag from the Witchy Stitcher, I have a pre ult what's ultimately going to be a present for my tattoo artist, Sherry. This is the Black Phillip pattern from the Witchy Stitcher. Okay, <laughs> that was exciting. Um, this is going to, like I said, it's going to ultimately be a gift for my tattoo artist, uh, Sherry. I've got an appointment in December. This will not be done in time to give to her in December. But um, I'm doing this on a blood spatter. I think this is by Jody. I think Michelle. Um, from Bendy Stitchy told me this was Jody. I bought it through Fire Poppies, but this is some of Jody's fabric. Fire, um, and it's 32 count linen. I'm doing it over two, and I'm using black. And then instead of the call for red, I'm using some leftover etoile from a, a Frosted Pumpkin kit. So I thought that would be kind of cool to have the shiny red in there. So that's how far I am on that. I just got working on the top little panel. And then this is in a bag from uh, Junie. She didn't make this for me, she just bought it. It's a skinny Laminx bag, but she said she thought I would enjoy it. And I do. All right, um, let's see. Then, 
in this bag that I got from my local needle workshop, which is in a desperate need of wash because the cats have laid on it. Uh, I have my Space Sampler by Mathosphere, Jerry Ambrose Mathosphere, and it is a, she does several different um, samplers. This one is, she's got a, a, she's got some dinosaur patterns out now, and she's got um, a, a botanical sampler, which I also have, and I don't know where the front page is of this, but I don't guess it matters to, oh, here it is. So it's got different astronomy things on it. So I wanna make this to hang in my office. And I am doing this on 25 count black Lugana over two. And this is where I'm at on that. So I've got the top quarter basically done. So there's four, there's 12 or 16 squares total. So I'm a quarter of the way done with this. So I've got, there's a spiral galaxy, a telescope silhouette. This is a comet. And then this is an H2 region here. I think I'm pretty well done. I've got a little bit more to do, I think, on the H2 region before it's done. So, I'm having difficulty stitching on this Lugana because it's really hard for me to read the holes, and so I get messed up on it sometimes. But, I, you know, luckily this pattern is pretty forgiving. So, oh, and there's some other pet patterns in here that I need to not have in there that I will be looking for later. Okay, does anybody do that? You print stuff out and you just stick it in whatever available bag there is and then you got, where's that pattern? And then you print it out again. <laughs> okay, then the one that has been getting the most attention of late from me is a gift stitch that is a old thrift find Busilla kit. It is... Um, I don't have the picture of it in here, but it is a pillowcase. It is a pair of stamped cross stitch pillowcases that have magnolia blossoms on them. I finished one. I'm working on the second one, and this is the one that I've been spending the time on because this is a gift stitch. This is going to be a gift for Miss Betsy. So you can see I'm about halfway through, maybe a little bit more than halfway through because there's only two leaves on this side. Uh, I picked this up again and started on it. My stitches are terribly uneven, but people have assured me that it will look better after it's washed. And I am gonna wash this. We're having this discussion about washing versus non-washing. Y'all, my life, cats lay on it, dirt. I mean, I'm like pig pen from, from from peanuts, dirt just follows me around. That's just the way it goes. <laughs> you know, that's just the way life on the farm, I think, is. I have never been a particularly dainty person, and things get dirty. This was already had a stain on it, so I'm concerned that the stains are not going to come out, and I'm going to end up having to cut the cross-stitch panels off and uh, apply them uh, to another uh, a pillowcase that I make, but we'll see. But anyway, so I've got this on a thrift store find uh, table stand that clamps to the table. So, um, yeah, so we'll see about getting that done. I, I mean, I feel I feel like I'll be able to get that done by Christmas time because that's what I'm focusing on right now. So those are my cross-stitching whips. I um, have a lot. I'm a little discouraged by how many that I have, not because I don't, I don't mind having a lot of works in progress, but I do mind when I feel like I'm, have just started a bunch of stuff and haven't touched it in forever. But, you know, this is how you fix that. You do a whip parade and you go, oh yeah, I forgot about that. And then you decide to work on it, right? So those are my works in progress. Um, we're gonna forego future crafting and acquisitions for today, um, simply because I don't wanna start anything until, I'm probably not gonna start anything new until after, till, uh, maybe a Christmas Eve cast on, we'll see, or a winter solstice cast on. That'll be something that I talk about in the haul of vlogs. Um, so we're just gonna move straight on and talk a little bit about some science. Okay, so um, campus is winding down for the semester we've got 
we go back tomorrow, we've got two more days of instruction and then we go into finals. Um, it's been a great semester. It's been, the re-entry has been difficult for students, I'm not gonna lie. And it's been difficult for some of us faculty too. Um, you know, things are different now and, and in some good ways and in some ways that we've got to learn to adjust to. Um, I've had a, it's been a pleasure being back in the classroom, I will tell you that for sure. Vanessa from the Crafty Planting Life came and talked to my class over Zoom the other day. Uh, her area of expertise in history is sort of mid-century uh, period, like post-World War II, and I asked her to come talk about how the atomic age had influenced pop culture because one of the things I think my students need to understand is the context that science has in the world. And we seen, have seen that play out with the pandemic for sure. But, you know, kind of where did this all, you know, how, does, how has this played out before in uh, other times in history? So I think they really enjoyed that a lot. Um, then we are, well, I don't have, I have two, or I have two students working with me on their senior capstone, but they're just in capstone one. So they're just getting their their uh, presentation or their project kind of kicked off this semester. Um, you know, other than that, we just been, you know, going along, uh, trying to, you know, figure out this new normal, right? The new normal. And I've been doing some leadership things on campus, as I've mentioned a couple of times. Um, the Building Anti-Racist White Educators program I've been doing, which I have really been, um, I think that's been really beneficial for me. It's had some very con convicting um, messages about how to be a, an effective ally and not be performative. Um, also about how allyship doesn't end when you're not in the room with your friends who are the um, intentionally ignored groups of people. I don't like calling them underrepresented minorities because their representation, there's plenty of, of, of them. It's that they have been intentionally ignored. And I think I got that from Michelle. So thank you for that. Um, but we have been talking about that. And then also I've been doing the early career uh, faculty coaching circle. I'm one of the coaches and we've been talking about work-life balance and we've been talking about getting your scholarship or your research program uh, going. And yeah, so that's been really good and I'm, I'm really pleased to have been involved with that. The women's book group book this semester has been reading Essentialism by Greg McCowan or McKeon. I can't get it. I can't fall in love with this book. He started out with like this really super entitled you know, cis, het, rich, white guy attitude, and I can't get past that. I'm trying, I'm trying really hard, and the discussions that we've had about the topics in the book have been really good. I can't get next to this book. I just can't. I, I He lost me at the very beginning, and then he talked about, in great detail, about an animal experiment, and I'm like, I'm out. I'm out, I can't, I can't deal with this. So, um, I'm having a hard time with this book. Um, it's got some good messaging in it about stuff, but I think he, he's coming from a really, really, really privileged place. And he's writing for people who are kind of in that place. And I think his writing's a little tone deaf. So I'm having a hard time with this book. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm there for the, I'm there for the discussion and, and, and I enjoy the women in the group, so that's good. But um, yeah, I wrote in here, why does this man hate animals so much? <laughs> a couple of places. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at on that. Um, I, found, I found a really cool, sometimes when I'm sewing or I'm crafting or I'm grading, I'll put on science videos and just let them play kind of in the background. I guess I learned by osmosis. Um, and I wanted to share with you a couple of um, things that I have learned. The first one is, and this, this one stopped me in my tracks when I heard it. Um, it was a video about coloration in the animal kingdom. And, um, oh, sorry, I'm looking up something else to hold, please, as Michelle says. Um, so, I'm looking at, I was, I was listening to a, um, okay, so, 
One of the things that I do when I'm listening to or when I'm crafting is I'll put on science podcasts or when I'm grading, I'll put on science podcasts and I'll listen to them um, just kind of in the background. And occasionally I will hear something that will just stop me and I'll stop in my tracks and kind of like that record scratch moment, that whoop moment. And this was a SciShow episode where they were talking about animal coloration and they were talking about um, the coloration of Siamese cats. And they were, I was listening to this and I'm like, I never knew that. Some of these cats have a protein in them that's responsible for the production of melanin. It's called tyrosinase. I think I'm saying that right, tyrosinase. And it's temperature dependent. So the mutation, well, it's a mutation in the protein that causes melanin. Um, it's tyrosinase is the is the protein that makes melanin, but Siamese cats have a particular mutation that cat people sometimes refer to as the Himalayan gene, which, you know, Himalayan cats have similar coloration to Siamese cats. And the mutation is that that protein, the mutation in this protein causes it to stop functioning as the temperature goes up. So the warmer parts of the cat's body don't produce as much melanin as the cooler parts. So when some of these kittens are born, they're white because they're in the womb, they're at a consistent temperature, all that. Within about a week of them being born, you'll notice that their points, their ear tips, their legs and feet, the tips of their tail, any bot in their face, you know, parts of their faces, places where the heat leaves the body faster turn darker and it's because of this muta mutation in this protein and there were to see how this worked people actually raised cats in different temperature environments and the colors were different even though they and they could bring cats from one temperature environment to another and when they shed their current coat the coat that grew in grew in as a response to the temperature of the environment that they were being raised in and i was like what <laughs> Wow, that's really cool. So tyrosinase, there's a mutation in the tyrosinase protein. So the parts of the body that ex exchange heat faster, so it would be cooler. So like when you go outside, your hands and feet get colder fast or the tips of your nose or your ears because those parts of your body don't hang on to heat as well. They're darker. So isn't that cool? I thought that was just freaking amazing. Then I was listening to another... Um, another podcast by them um and they were talking about um bonding hydrogen bonding and they brought up a person named june Souter. and june Souter is a crystallographer she's from new zealand she was doing crystallography roughly the same time as uh, Rosalind Franklin, and she was working on carbon-hydrogen bonding, or what's called the hydrogen bond, and she was looking at purine crystals, trying to decode the way that the hydrogen bonding worked, and basically, she got treated in very much the same way as Rosalind Franklin did. She was treated by, um, she published this idea about hydrogen bonding and there was a contemporary of hers, Jerry Donahue, who was an American male crystallographer and he basically um, was sort of the god of crystallography because he was the one who took the stolen work from Rosalind Franklin that Watson and Crick had and reproduced it, and he's the one that got the Nobel Prize along with um, Watson and Crick. Don't even get me started. Uh, he basically wrote this very um, hateful rebuttal of her work, and it got put in pretty much every crystallography book that was out there saying, no, she doesn't know what she's doing, this is wrong. And, um, and she had, and that was, you know, the, that was, his word was law, even though he wasn't correct. 
because it took until I think it was later in the um, I think it was in the 90s when two other scientists I believe who were both women verified that her her model of the hydrogen bond was correct at that point she you know when all this was happening she had moved back to New Zealand and was working on other things so she had never um, she never got the notif notice that she was you know that she deserved because she was correct um yeah so June Souter and yeah that just makes me really um frustrated <laughs> um she did see she was alive when Taylor and Kennard uh verified her work so there is that um but she never made any um mention of it so she um you know yet one more example of a woman scientist not getting the recognition they deserve hopefully that tide has changed over time Although I will say there are still some examples of that today. How many women have won the Nobel Prize in physics? Not that many. Three, four, three or four, three. I know it was three a couple of years ago. I don't know if one's one. I haven't paid attention. Simon, please. Man. Anyway, I know you want Shirley to know that you're here, but you're really not supposed to be right there. Anyway, <laughs> so that's what's going on in the science world. So now we'll talk a little bit about farm life. Okay, so what's going on here on the farm? It's, we're putting out hay. <laughs> That's pretty much what's going on. Putting out lots of hay, and we got a cat fight going on. Y'all quit. <laughs> ah, see, this is why I podcast in the other room where the animals are not. Um, but anyway, or I should, but it's a mess, so we're in here today. Um, winter, we're, we're into winter mode here. We haven't had any really super, super cold weather. We've had a couple of lows in the 20s. Um, it's warmed back up a little bit today, but we're putting out hay, we're making sure everybody has warm straw in their beds, we're making sure Willie has on his sweater, even though he manages to get it off most of the time. Um, so yeah, we're just kind of in winter mode. Plenty of hay though this year, so I'm thankful for that. And everybody seems to be doing okay. Chips' leg is still, um, you know, looking terrible, but I'm working on that still. You saw a little bit of that if you watched Vlogween, and you'll see a little bit more of that if you watch whole vlog. Um, but everybody seems to be doing okay. I've still got my horses at home from Marianne's right now. I am riding in the flag show, but I'm riding one of her horses. Come on now, y'all don't be jealous. Uh, I am riding one of her horses in the flag show because mine just needed a break, and, and they're enjoying being home and just being being horses, right? Um, I was looking outside at the garden, one of the projects, my, my two projects for while I'm off over Christmas break or holiday break is uh, I want to get my craft room straightened up. That's the number one priority. And that's going to be a big project. But I, I think I've got a, a, a logistic plan that will work now. Excuse me. Okay. He's going to bed now that he's got his sweater back on. Um, and then I want to clean, start cleaning up my garden area. That one I can, you know, do piecemeal. The, the craft room is the priority because that's going to take like a chunk of time, you know, to drag everything out and get it organized. But I've got to do it. It's just disaster in there, as y'all have seen. <laughs> um, but I'm also going to do some canning. I need to do some chili beans and some broth and I want to make some jerky. So you'll get to see all of that if you follow me, my holo vlog uh, videos. I did mention that we lost Lacey. Lacey, it was my one of my oldest dogs. My large dogs, all of them are over 10 years old. So it is, you know, that's just the way it goes when you have dogs, big dogs, is they don't live as long as the little guys do. Um, and that's the sad reality of that. But Lacey, um, you know, she had not been feeling well for a while and she went downhill pretty fast. I mean, it was, it start, she started getting kind of bad on Saturday and by Sunday, I'm like, okay, we got to call the vet Monday. And she um, died Sunday afternoon. 
um, and I've buried her up in the pasture where everybody else is buried, you know, so, um, Simon. He just went over the phone. I know you can see him, but he's he's just got to be involved. <laughs> um, Baxter is is continuing to do well now that he is on his new med his new uh, feed. And I actually took a video by the clinic the other day to let them see. And Doctor Bud was very excited to see it. And he said actually he uses him as an example to talk to people about this is what getting your cat through kidney stones looks like. So that made me feel good. Um, Cattle are all doing uh, good. Seems to be um, just trying to make sure I keep hay in front of them and keep them warm. I did have a young calf that got knocked down the other day. Simon. <laughs> um, I did have a young calf. She got knocked down, and cattle are real bad when they get knocked down and they get laid out flat. They don't do, they don't know what to do, kind of. They don't. They don't lay down flat because they're ruminants and they don't do well flat on their sides. Uh, but I think I had got there right after it happened. So I got her up and moving around and I thought, well, I, you know, I put, was putting hay on. I thought, well, when I get hay put out, I texted a couple of people and said, can you help me come get this calf? Thinking, well, if she's still kind of weak, I'll bring her up to the house and put her in a pen and feed her. Oh no, she was fine. She was running from me by the time I got back down there. So she was, she was doing just fine. Um, but that's kind of where we're at here on the farm. I'm thinking about my garden for next year. I want to try to do a better job with it next year. I'm going to have to cut down. My quince trees died, so I'm going to have to cut them back. Um, I just want to clean the yard up and get it back in shape. I didn't have anybody mow my yard this year because the guy that mows for me did not want to mow for a um, someone who believed that COVID was real, basically. <laughs> Um, and made that quite plain what he thought about me. And I'm like, that's fine. I don't want to give you money if you're like that. So, you know, my yard really didn't get mowed except the couple of times that I ran the bush hog <laughs> over it. And then my friend Tim loaned me his weed eater and I did a little bit of weed eating. Um, cause my wheat, my big push weed eater quit me too. So that was fun. Deer season is going on right now. I think this is the last weekend of modern gun season. My friends have gotten, uh, we've got deer meat in the freezer. So that's good. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at, you know, just getting along here on the farm. But I do plan to do some um, things in Hall of Log to kind of show you some tutorial type stuff. I figured out that my Lowry stand makes a great camera stand too. <laughs> so multi-purpose, right? As much as those things cost, they should be multi-purpose. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so that's kind of where we're at on the farm. Nothing too exciting there. So I guess we'll finish up with a few final thoughts. Oh, I forgot to mention, I've been kind of keeping a little secret because I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it, but it's uh, National Novel Writers Month. And I have been, since the beginning of this year, working on a cheesy romance novel, but... Nevertheless, and I've been writing on it, so I've been taking this month to work on it. I haven't worked on it every single day, but I've worked on it most days. And um, I'm not going to say it's autobiographical, or, well, it's not autobiographical, because I certainly don't have any rich billionaires crashing their motorcycles in front of my house. But, you know, wouldn't that be nice if they did? <laughs> anyway, I've got in mind a series of books that I want to write, um, and... We'll see how that all works out. But, um, yeah, so if I ever put that out, I'll let y'all know. Um, so what I wanted to do is finish with, as usual, one of my readings. I found this the other day, and I thought it was really good, and I wanted to... Okay, this is my third time to try to record this, because there's been a, a cat fight twice in the middle of me doing it. So we'll try this one more time. Um, this is a poem by Becky Hemsley that I found on Facebook, or it's attributed to Becky Hemsley. I don't know where it's from. It's just a Facebook post that I um, saw, but I wanted to share it with you because I really identified with it, and I think maybe some of you will too. She sat at the back, and they said she was shy. She led from the front, and they hated her pride. They asked her advice and then questioned her guidance. They branded her loud, then were shocked by her silence. When she said shared no ambition, they said it was sad. So she told them her dreams, and they said she was mad. They told her they'd listen, then covered her their ears and gave her a hug while they laughed at her fears. And she listened to all of it, thinking she should, 
be the girl they told her to be best as she could. But one day she asked what was best for herself instead of trying to please everyone else. So she walked to the forest and stood with the trees. She heard the wind whisper and dance with the leaves. She spoke to the willow, the elm, and the pine, and she told them what she'd been told time after time. She told them she felt she was never enough. She was either too little or far, far too much. Too loud or too quiet, too fierce or too meek, too weak, too wise or too foolish, too bold or too meek. Then she found a small clearing surrounded by firs, and she stopped and she heard what the trees said to her. And she sat there for hours, not wanting to leave, for the forest said nothing. It just let her breathe. And I identify by that so much. <laughs> so, and I'm sure some of y'all do too. So, on that thought, I hope you are all doing well. I'm going to try to be much more consistent in my podcasting schedule next year uh, and be more engaged. Um, sometimes I get discouraged when I shouldn't be, I guess, about podcasting. Um, and it's for selfish self-centered reasons and I need to remember that I'm doing this because I enjoy it and I am so grateful for all the friends that I've made through podcasting you know I've made some wonderful friends that I would have never met otherwise so I'm so grateful for that I hope you will join me for haul vlog I hope you will go back and watch my sewing video and give it a like um so yeah so until I see y'all again what Willie? Y'all be good to each other and take care of each other. And what? Willie's got his sweater on and he's in the sun and he's ready for a nap, he says. So we'll see y'all starting on December 1st for Holovlog. Until we see y'all then again, y'all. Peace out, y'all. Bye. What you think? Bye.